Dan Oman, Mike Beer kicking off the 50 cent late pick five at Gulfstream Park on Saturday with graded stakes action. Let's throw up the field for race number seven, the grade three Kittens Joy Stakes. We're going about seven and a half furlongs, newly minted three-year-olds on the turf. Field of nine entered, one main track only runner, the seven New York traffic. Timeform US believes that the bookends are going to be part of the pace. The one gets smoking from the inside does have good speed. The nine summer to remember prompted the pace last time out. I kind of agree with that. I do wonder if the eight Island Commission can get closer, though. I think he will. I, I thought Island Commission would be closer, too, but I don't argue with uh, one of the nine being forwardly placed. Get smoking looked good, I thought, to win at Belmont. Two starts back. He broke very sharply. Javier raided him to sit second. He attacked on the far turn, and I think he beat a solid enough field in that race. And last time out on the Awad, that was a very fast pace, I thought, and he just paid the price. I mean, it certainly was a race that sort of fell apart at the end there, and he was pretty close to it in there. He did not run a particularly good race, but maybe has an excuse for it. If I'm being honest, I wasn't blown away by either of his first two starts either. Um, but he does have speed. He'll be forwardly placed. He picks up Ortiz for this. Uh, maybe he'll run a little bit better. Freshened up for this race. Bullet workout at Palm Meadows. Expect him to be forward breaking uh, from the inside with that short run to the first turn. The runner-up from the last race came back to win the Central Park in New York with a 75 buyer. The two is Irish Mias, second last time out in the pulpit stakes. We're going to take a look at that race right now. I thought overall a good trip. Saved ground, got to the outside here, is going to make a little bit of a run to finish second. I thought there was pace for him to run at. But boy, 85 buyer speed figure, nothing to sneeze at. I thought he ran pretty well in here, too. Uh, you know, if nothing else, um, I think overall the trip was a good one. Um, but the pace was pretty fast, and it seemed like Rajiv was asking him to go a little bit early in that race. They were still going pretty pretty good up in front of him when Rajiv was getting into this horse. So, you know, I thought he ran well. The 85 buyer suggests he's going to be really tough in this race. I kind of want to see him run it again, Dan, but um, I don't really have a lot of knocks on this horse. He's a prior stakes winner, as is the three. Yesterday, once more, who won in his North American debut at Del Mar, the juvenile Philly turf. They ran her in the surfer girl last time out. And again, I thought that pace was pretty solid, and she was up close to that pace. The winner came back to run third on dirt in a stakes race with a 65 buyer. I think they want to take her back and make one run. I think she's more effective that way, but she does like to pull and can be yeah. a difficult ride. I mean, I think they probably want to do that too um you know we'll see what happens if they ship her over here to run against the boys this time um i did think her stateside debut was actually pretty good the trip ultimately really worked out for her um but i like the way that she finished it off in the stretch last time she just got way too headstrong was pulling up after the pace and she just came up completely empty the last two and a half furlongs or so of that race were not pretty for her. Um, but if she can settle a little bit, maybe get covered up, maybe she can uh, make a little bit of an impact here. Bless the kitten, the number four goes out for the very dangerous Michael Maker Barn. This horse got the job done in the second lifetime start at Churchill Downs, beating three next out winners, one of them coming back to score by open lengths at Turfway Park with a 69 buyer speed figure. This one would appreciate some hitting. Do you think yeah. the seven and a half is a little, little sh sharp for this one? Might be a little short. He's going to probably need a little bit of pace to run into, but I just thought this horse ran pretty well first time. That was a pretty live race, and it just looked like they might have been setting him up for something. They just took him back. He was really running at the end of that race last time. Boy, did they ride him with a lot of confidence in that race. Kept him very wide throughout. It looked like he was going to go right by the leaders in the stretch. He started to hang a little bit in there, Dan. I liked the way that he re-engaged. He had that horse, the, the horse that wound up finishing second, showed up on his outside late. And as soon as that horse got there, this horse re-engaged and came again to get up and win that race. I think there's something there with this horse, but he's clearly going to have to improve to beat this field. Number six, uh, number five is King Theo, Javier Castellano on a horse trying turf for the first time. The more than ready, certainly acceptable yeah. with turf uh, pro pro progeny, 12% first time turfers. Just don't see enough turf on the bottom. Dan went 0 for 2 on the surface. His fold one turf runner did not win. Just a lot of dirt on the bottom of this pedigree. I didn't like the pedigree that much either, aside from the more than ready, which is obviously good. Um, I, you know, I feel like you might see this horse get forward as well in this race. If he takes the turf, you know, it feels like you're probably going to get the right price on him if you like him. I just couldn't really buy into it. Six is Mystic Lancelot. Todd Pletcher takes the blinkers off, and this horse was a debut winner without blinkers at Saratoga going five and a half furlongs. That was a pretty decent field he yeah. beat in that race. He's coming out of the Atlantic Beach Stakes at Saratoga, sprinting. A couple next time winners have already uh, emerged from that race, and Bolden, the runner-up, came back to run well on dirt. Third in the Springboard Mile with an 86. Uh, I, I won't hold the one-route race against him. The no. one-turn summer over a very yielding turf 
of course. Um, I think this horse is somewhat interesting stretching out for the first time. I'm going to call it a stretch uh, out for the first yeah, time. Yeah, we'll see what happens. I liked his debut a lot. I don't really like any of his races since then. Um, they're, they've all been in stakes company, obviously, and he's going to try that again here. If you want to give him a choose for the last one, um, that was at a time on the aqueduct turf where he wanted to be inside and he was never near the inside. Maybe that's an excuse, but... I just really haven't been thrilled with his three races since the debut, Dan. New York traffic entered main track only. The eight is Island Commish. This horse has won his last two races against weaker competition. Very easy score last time out at Gulfstream West. Let's watch that race right now. Got right up close to the pace. Attacks on the turn. Uh, and he's right in front right now in the big white blinkers. He's just going to draw away to win with impunity. Not a strong field he beat, but no. he likes the seven and a half. Yeah. And we both think he can be a little closer to the pace. I think he can be. He's won two in a row over this distance those races at Gulfstream West it feels like he's facing a much tougher field this time we'll see if he's up for it summer to remember another horse trained by Todd Pletcher this horse got it done at Gulfstream on December the 11th just got right up on the pace he was one to two in this race he battled this 12 to one shot from the rail all the way throughout this horse got ahead in front summer to remember just battles right back and he is extending at the end not a lot of closing going yeah. on in this race I think you have to ask yourself who did this horse beat but he looked good doing it he has tactical speed and I think there's another forward move coming I kind of agree with you I mean, yeah, the trip really worked out for him in that race. But at the end of the day, he was much the best. Once he was asked a question in the stretch, there was really no doubt about it. His debut back at Saratoga actually wasn't that bad. He got caught behind a horse who was stopping around the second turn. He took a little bit of a shuffle. I thought he did well to be second uh, to a good horse yeah. in that race. You know, I realized that it just on paper, maybe he's not the horse to beat. In a lot of ways, I feel like he might be the horse to beat. I think he's the horse to beat in here. That's why I picked him on top as we take a look at our top selections for the kitten's joy i'm going with summer to remember you're going with bless the kitten kind of come from out of it in here again that was a really nice performance at churchill downs just want to give him a chance and you know, i felt like he might be the right price and i do think there's something there with him we'll see if it sets up i'm not way against summer to, rem to remember but they're my two in this race the four and the nine Nine two eight six for me, four nine two three for Mike. Grade three, Kittens Joy, kicking off a fifty cent late pick five at Gulfstream on Saturday. Approximate post time for the seventh race, three o'clock Eastern. Good luck.